Good morning and welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm Sarah Stewart, I'll be your host today. And today we have the wonderful Katie Wyman with us. Hello everyone. Hi Katie. Um, so yeah, we have a lot to cover today and we did cover a lot yesterday, but to start out I wanna talk about some of the other streams that are going on this week. And so this morning we had Hiba and Paul talking about trading cards by making a Pokemon card trading app organizer. We then have Katie Wyman who's working on a wonderful application to help people with dietary restrictions pick different restaurants to eat at as a group. And later today we'll have Sarah joined by Lindsay and they're working on a health app. Um, so please tune in to all the different streams check out these amazing guests. And today we have a full lineup of women, which I think is awesome, <laughs> girl power. Um, so thank you all for being here for this week. And now let's talk a bit about what Katie did yesterday, what we're gonna cover today, and what we'll do tomorrow. And so yesterday, Katie, do you wanna talk a little bit about what you covered? I know we went through a lot of processes, yes. um, focusing really heavily on the UX process. Yes, so yesterday we talked about the research, pro the research, research part of UX design. Um, I talked about developing personas, about um, making sure who you know uh, your target audience and who you are designing for. Um, we also went over problem statements, um, why we're designing this app and how we can create a solution to this specific problem. So the problem that we have today is that people with different dietary needs um, are having a difficult time finding a restaurant to go to. Uh, so I'm designing an app today for you that's going to help solve that problem. Yeah, and it's definitely relevant to my life. I'm sure it's relevant to the chatter's life. So if you want to talk about some of your dietary restrictions and pain points you've experienced when you're looking for restaurants mm -hmm. with your friends, I don't know if you've been like me, been the odd person out where you have a dietary restriction and no one else does, and so you need to be proactive about where you're choosing to eat. Mm -hmm. This could have saved me a lot of time. Yeah. But uh, me and my partner, we're both lactose intolerant. We're both trying to eat vegetarian. So this would be a really handy tool for us personally. What about everyone else? Yeah, let us know. Um, personally, I eat vegan and I love it so much. And I want to share that experience with friends. So if I go out to eat with a person that doesn't eat vegan food, then this can help encourage them. But in at, at the same time, it gives us a uh, common ground uh, to share an experience together without having to compromise on what we want to eat. So that's yeah. very important. Yeah, it's a creative solution. It's not a restriction. I like you saying that. It's not a restriction. It's an opportunity to be creative with how you eat. Yeah. Awesome. And I know that you created some beautiful visual representations on some pieces of paper. I don't know if you want to <laughs> briefly like flash some of those. We went through these yesterday, so if you want to see them in detail, please check out day one. Um, but she did a wonderful job of putting together some of these beautiful illustrations. Let's see if we can pull it up on the GoPro. Wonderful. So yeah, beautiful personas. What else do we, we have, have here? our personas, what the persona wants, the drivers. Um, we talked about the user types for this app specifically. Uh, then we went on to problem statements and then providing solutions down at the bottom. So our solutions are um, easy way to navigate and organize an intuitive user interface. We want to have engagement. We want to promote restaurant discoverability and engagement and activation. We want to give users an organic action to take while their engagement is still high. So we want them to find a restaurant, discover something new and feel excited to try it out. At the same time, um, our persona here, Winnie, she uses an app that uh, lets her check into places so that she can remember where she's been and revisit those places. So we also want to uh, have a feature in this app that lets her uh, favorite the places that she's discovered so that she can go back at a later time. Great, so all this was covered day one. Um, that's our recap for day one. I also wanna talk a little bit about our hype for today. 
um, and what our prize is going to be, and then also what our challenge for today is. If we look at all the challenges for day one through day three, yesterday we looked at some wonderful challenge submissions for so the World good. Cup, and they were fantastic. Go check those out. They were really mm -hmm. cool. We created some mobile screens, desktop screens. Today, we're going to be focusing on a mobile experience for your local summer mm -hmm. carnival, which sounds like a lot of fun. I hope so to see fun. some really cool imagery, maybe some cool like uh, clowns and other <laughs> activities going on. So check out the challenge details in the challenge tab. Um, we'll be looking over those later today. And tomorrow, we'll be looking over portfolios. So if you want a chance for us to give you some design feedback, on a portfolio in process mm -hmm. or maybe a portfolio that you've had up for a while that you want to get some feedback on, please submit them and we'll be happy to give you some feedback and look those over. So please participate. Mm -hmm. We're happy to have you here. And um, we also have a challenge today to win what I believe is this lovely, cute little bag oh, for a so bunch of little art supplies. It has a beautiful pattern on it. Oh, it's an XD bag. Okay, <laughs> so this has the XD label, it has these beautiful patterns, and you can put all your charcoal, your pencils, your paints, so cool. your inks. What would you put inside this bag, Katie? Um, I carry around Sharpies and all these pens because I love to doodle. So it'd be your doodle bag. My doodle bag, exactly. <laughs> my illustration bag. You can it's carry so this beautiful, around. yeah. Yeah. I love it. Very cool. <laughs> All right, so please participate. Let us know what you think of uh, the Dietary Restriction app. Let us know where you're from. Mm -hmm. Or just talk to us, give us some questions, and you have a chance to win this bag in just a little bit. So thank you all for being here. And today, we're going to be diving deep into wireframing. Um, we'll start out with wireframing in XD, and then from there, we'll move on to visual design. Mm -hmm. Katie, do you want to talk a bit about what you're hoping to accomplish today? Yes, so uh, um, I hope to uh, cover lo-fi wireframing, talk a little bit about its importance, why we do that first step, um, and then I want to uh, go more on the UI user interface design, um, and yeah, I want to develop this app and... Maybe test it out a little test bit. Test it out, yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right, so thank you all for being here. We got some people from Berlin, Party House, nice name. Um, Ray is interested in a portfolio review. Definitely submit that tomorrow, Ray. We'll be covering some more stuff tomorrow. Um, hello, Anel. Hello, Voodoo Val. Hello. Nice to see you guys again. <laughs> we got Omar, who's a vegan guy living in Mexico. He's doing UI Hi, and UX Omar. and other designs. Hi, Omar. Hamburg for Benjamin. <laughs> cool. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> and with Without further ado, let's jump into it, Katie. You ready to start working on some wireframes? Yep. I'm so excited Sweet. to show you. All right. So um, to recap what we did yesterday, um, we went over this user flow and map. And uh, this allows us to organize our thoughts and our flow on how the app is going to um, look and feel. So I uh, started doing lo-fi, low-fidelity wireframes here, and let's open this up. And uh, we have our onboarding page right here. And if you click Command 3, you can zoom in on that specific wireframe. So that's really cool. Yeah, this is a really cute little background <laughs> image you got going on. Usually wireframes are pretty low fidelity, but these are starting to look pretty cute. I think so. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, and in UX design, it's very common to use the mountain and sun icon to uh, represent where the image is going to be. So that's why you see uh, mountains and a sun. Oh, gotcha. That has nothing to do with the it's app. Placeholder. It's placeholder, nice. placeholder, yes. When I do placeholders, mine are just the big X, so yours are fancier than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, onboarding. These next three onboarding wireframes represent the tutorial um, that teaches you how to use the app or what you're uh, supposed to expect from the app. So we have... Um, Wireframe one is your preference. You select your dietary preferences. Then wire onboarding two is you find a friend. Um, and then 
three is you discover the restaurant. So what I've done here is I, uh, as you can see, this is gonna be where the image is going to fall into. And then down here, I created three diamonds that represent uh, the stage within the onboarding tutorial. So um, I actually have to change this color to white. And then, as you can see down here, this is stage two. So we're gonna have to change it to black. And then the next one is the last stage. So these are, this is a cool way to demonstrate a process within the application. Yeah, it got a nice little progression with little dots. Yes. And then we have the get started button. And um, to reiterate how this is going to look as the app, as the user is using the app, and also to show to development, to the development team, we want to let them know um, what our expectations are. So for, for first time users right up here, you can see that we're gonna have an onboarding screen tutorial, and then it's gonna go over to the login with a Facebook. Um, but after the first time use, then you won't have the tutorial, onboarding, yeah. the onboarding tutorial. Yeah. Um, then we have the connect with Facebook button, which is great because it's going to integrate all of your friends list and all of your uh, information. So that's cool. Nice, so you don't have to manually enter in all your friends and their dietary stuff. They can uh, just pull all that info in, which is nice. Yeah. Cool. Next we have uh, <laughs> a food preference. So this is going to be a prompt after you've uh, signed in or logged in. This is going to ask you what your, uh, do you have any allergies? Do you have any diet preferences? Um, and so I've already started designing this, but I wanna show you a really cool tool that XD has that allows you to duplicate uh, things within the wireframe super easily. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you like this feature because I do and it's a time saver. Yes, it definitely is. And you can use it um, for anything more than just wireframes. So it's a super useful tool. We're talking about the repeat grid. Yes. So what you do is um, you select an object and over here on the right side panel, you can click on the repeat grid and then you can drag down this little thing right here, the green thing. Resizer tool. Resizing yeah. tool. Yeah. <laughs> and there you go. That's so easy. It's such a time saver. Yeah. Um, and another thing is that, as you can see, this, this uh, artboard is a lot different than the previous ones because I've um, extended the size. But if you click on the artboard itself, you can notice this blue dotted line, and that allows you, that informs you where the actual, like the um, iPhone artboard ends. Yeah, what the screen will see when they're looking at your application, it's kind of the window. Um, I don't know what the official term is, yeah, but it would be what a user would be able to see on the screen at one period in time before having to scroll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Blake says, that's really cool. I agree, the repeat grid is a very cool tool. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so then you can go on and do that on these over here. And I, I love it. It's also really fun to see your work come alive quickly. Um, I'm, I'm the kind of person that um, is detail oriented, but, but I also really do care about uh, how the process is going. Um, I want to get all of my ideas on these artboards before I forget uh, where, yeah. where this, the, uh, this design is going, so. Yeah, yeah, it's not about being pixel perfect at the wireframe level, and it's definitely just about getting the content on there and populating these pages. So using simple shapes and quick tricks to make things uh, happen faster, which is what the repeat mm -hmm. grid is good at. 
Yeah, especially if you're on a tight deadline, it's super helpful too. Yeah, Stefani helped me with, or helped us both with our forgetting what it is called. It's called above the fold. Oh, and you can see above uh, the fold. Yeah, the blue dotted line represents what's above <laughs> the fold before you have to scroll on a page, which makes sense for both desktop and mobile applications. So thank you, Stefani. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, yes, and then as you can see up here, I added another um, process thing. What do you call it? <laughs> Does anyone know what this is called? Uh, the process slider or slider? Yeah, I would call it a slider if it's going to move from one side to the other. Okay. Yeah, we can ask chat though. What do you think that should be called? <laughs> should it be called a slider? Should it be called a um, what else could it be called? A, a not a radio button, but there's a a tool where it slides over a slider, I guess, is what I always refer to it as. Yeah, bar. We got progress progression progress bar. bar. Yes, slider. <laughs> People agree with the slider terminology. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. Hi, Carlos. Thanks for joining us. Hello. <laughs> bar. Yep. So a slider, bar, whatever gets progression. the idea across. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'm super blind, so anytime I want to look at either the screen where I'm at or the chat, I have to put on my glasses. But I don't like to wear my glasses when I'm looking at the screen because then it's too, it makes my head hurt. It's like too close. Yeah. I've also heard about blue light glasses. I don't know if anyone else has heard of them, but I got a free pair at a hackathon. So it helps with the blue light that comes from your computer screen to help you, um, help your body adjust to natural lighting. And so if you're going to be using a screen before bed, there are apps on your phone already that change the lighting. But you can also wear these glasses so you don't get as many headaches, I hope. That's so So maybe cool. you should try my glasses and see if they help you out. Yeah. Did you bring them with you today? I didn't. I'll maybe bring them tomorrow, though. We can bring them tomorrow and try them For out. For sure. Yeah. Yes. Has anyone else tried blue light glasses? <laughs> I'd be curious. Hi, Sarah friends from Germany. Oh, nice. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hey, Hector. Hi, Hector. <laughs> oh, Party House has a blue light filter on his glasses. I'm not alone. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think it's awesome too. <laughs> no, I keep missing things when I take my glasses off. <laughs> oh, no problem. I'll try to pull you into the conversation. <laughs> and it's also so embarrassing because people I know may be walking next to me or like past me and I don't see them coming. You don't recognize them. I don't them recognize not wearing them. Glasses. So. <laughs> that happened to me yeah. before. I got LASIK surgery though, so I can see now because it really bothered me when I couldn't see. But when that would happen, I'd feel so bad because people would be like waving at me, and mm. I'd be like, I don't, I don't know if they're looking at me. I don't know who that is, and I just walk yeah. by. <laughs> so I was just super rude before I got LASIK surgery. Apparently. That's how I feel. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> no, you're not rude. It's fine. It's just <laughs> eye problems. Um. Okay. Then uh, over here we have, okay, so after you're done inputting your dietary preferences, allergies, etc., we can, you click on this arrow and it's going to take you to this list. And this list is a part of your bar right here at the bottom. Now this is going to organize all of your information into two sections. So you have the allergy section and the diet preference section. And it's a cool way because you can always go back and edit um, and edit it, which is cool. Yeah, maybe you develop lactose intolerance later in life and you need to change it. I hope you don't. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or maybe you're on like a um, paleo diet kick and you want to Exactly discover paleo restaurants or something. That's so. way more realistic of an example, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also you can survive off of almond milk because it's delicious. Yeah, it is very delicious. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, your profile on this artboard. And um, as you can see, I've pulled in an inspiration piece right here because I like to design from other applications that I really like. And I actually created a mood board right here with various images of screens that I really feel inspired by. I think it's so important to do this because 
they're reminders. Maybe you have an original idea that you want to develop, but also it's really cool to compare, um, yeah, to compare your work with others that are out there because you know those are already developed and they're probably very successful so you want your app to be successful too uh, not saying that it won't but it's you know the comparative uh, competitive analysis that you want to keep in mind and in this mood board um, I've organized it in a way that I write down exactly what I like about this picture. So here I like the way the lit, the food is displayed in the list in these boxes. And um, as you can see, I have so many and I'm also inspired by the colors and the photography in, in all of these. Um, as you can see over here, sorry for moving the screen so much. Okay. Where are you? Okay, yes, right here. <laughs> oh, I, cool. I really like how they displayed their options right here in this manner. So what I've done is I've duplicated this style and I incorporated it over here. Yes, we got the basic shapes built out and that's where your inspiration is coming from. That's really cool. Yes. So would you have that inspiration copy pasted into this document too? It seems like you did for the profile. Yes, exactly. Cool. Yeah, nice. and it makes it way easier. Um, I have a design background, but many of you may not. And I think it's really cool to just, to you know, to not have um, uh, barriers, you know? You can always design and get inspiration from other artwork that's out there. So yeah. don't be afraid to do that. Check out Behance, there's wonderful stuff on there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think yeah. Behance, Instagram, all the uh, different places you can put your work online are great resources to connect with other people mm -hmm. and to see what other people are building. Yeah, we got a lot of people loving the mood board, so it's Thank beautiful you. that you put it together. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So uh, we're gonna, design this little um, profile page right here. Another thing that I really like is from another app. I don't know if I placed it in this mood board, but no, I didn't. But it's a kind of like a chart, a pie chart that tells you, that shows you visually um, what your top food options are. So for instance, I'm, I have a huge sweet tooth. <laughs> My chart map would have like a big sweets section. What would be your top sweet? What would you wanna see when you open this application? I would be like, oh man, I want that right now, every day, all the time. Ice cream. Ice cream, <laughs> nice. A certain flavor or all ice creams? Uh, cherry vanilla. Cherry vanilla is good. I'm oh, a yes. chocolate chip cookie dough kind of person, but I understand cherry vanilla. That comes third. It's <laughs> cherry vanilla, Oreo, and uh, chocolate chip cookie dough. Nice. Delicious. All right, Chad, what would be your top food on this application? Do you have a sweet tooth or do you have some other food that you like the best? Mm -hmm. I think my favorite food, I'm a weirdo, is a grapefruit. So I would see grapefruit at the top of this list. I love grapefruit. It's Those delicious. are so underrated. Yeah, yeah, let us know what you like. Got manka like in cookie dough. Um, Hector says both sound delicious, to be honest. <laughs> sushi, is it sushi or sushi? <laughs> there might have been a typo there. Sushi. Sushi, yeah, awesome. <laughs> boha boha, I don't know what that is. It sounds good, it sounds delicious. And <laughs> now Hector's craving ice cream, oh no. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Dark chocolate coconut, truffles, pralines, espresso yeah. ice cream, now I'm getting Ooh, hungry. Ooh, I also, I, I would have like a coffee section for sure. Yes. Coffee is delicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can do coffee and ice cream, maybe use the example images here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for That'd sure. That would be awesome. Mint chocolate chip is also pretty good. Mm. Pistachio and matcha. Those are unique flavors, but really yeah. delicious. Underrated, I would say. Anyone living in New York, please give ice cream shop recommendations oh because gosh. I would love to check them out. Yeah, yeah, let Katie know where she should go get some more ice cream. <laughs> Pizza. pizza. <laughs> nice. You always order pizza. She's in India right now. Mm -hmm. Aw. I understand missing your partner. Hopefully you guys can get pizza when she gets back. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so I'm creating another cir circle right here for the chart, the pie chart. And realistically, I would use Illustrator to create the pie chart, but because I don't, I'm not gonna be using it today, I'm just gonna do this for now as a visual representation of a pie chart. But uh, as we are uh, developing this into high fidelity wireframes, we will definitely uh, make it look a little bit more visually pleasing. It's about blocking in content right now. Yes. So here I'm putting the top category section. Um, and then another cool thing, I talked about this yesterday, but I love it. It's so, so easy. You can click on this little circle down here. The resizing tool is built right into your text, your text font. So you can easily adjust the size as you move it back and forth. So that's really cool. Make it big, make it small, make it big, make it small. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna put this right here. How many of you out there um, like this uh, app. I think like XD, XD. Yeah, it's really cool. Let us know what you like about it. Yeah, XDs are really powerful too. We've been putting out updates pretty consistently. I know there are a lot of competitors out there, but maybe talk about your favorite feature of XD or what you've used XD for lately. That'd be really cool to hear about. Or what you wish, what you hope to see in the future. Yeah, yeah, that would be good too. I have a few things in mind. Do yeah, you? there is a feedback tool actually built into XD too. So. Uh, if you ever have a recommendation for what you think the XD should work, XD team should work on, you can go into user voice, which is linked, I believe, in the top right. Um, yeah, maybe if you go to the share icon in the top right. Here? No, okay, so maybe, let me look for that and let you all know where you can go give feedback to the XD team, but then um, the different pieces of feedback are actually voted on, and so the features with the top votes are what the XD team will be working on for the newest releases, which is really cool. You get a voice into what you want XD to be working on, which is really That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so I'll find that out for everyone. Yes. I also feel like this is a great, um, a great program because it allows you to prototype as you go. You don't have to export your wireframes or do any other steps after. And it's cool because you want to see how your app is, if you want to see how your app is uh, functioning, you can quickly just um, click the prototype button on the left side corner and see how your app plays out when you click this little play button. But my wireframes are not, the artboards aren't uh, connected right now, so I can't show you, but I will pretty soon. Yep, tomorrow we'll be focusing on prototyping, um, we'll be focusing on style guides, so tune in tomorrow for some of those details. Yes. And yes, Voodoo Val linked out XD user voice. I highly recommend checking it out and seeing all the different feature requests that people are requesting for XD because it's a really powerful tool for the XD team to get insight into what you, the users, want out of the application. Mm -hmm. Victor is asking, does XD have library symbols with overrides like Sketch? Yeah, so we do have the ability now to import sketch files. Um, and then when you create a symbol in XD, you should be able to do that same functionality where you can override certain symbols with different text or different stylings, or you can just unlink them if you want to change it completely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so play around with importing some of your sketch files with uh, heavy symbol use or heavy library use to see how it ports over and give us feedback on that because we're working on that feature. Mm -hmm. But it's working pretty well last I played around with it. And talking about symbols. Oh, but we, we have fireworks right now, and so now it's time <laughs> to get hyped about the chat and win. So please, participate. Let us know what your favorite XD feature is, and we'll be back in just a sec. Mm -hmm. Hype! <laughs> 
Welcome back. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know what your favorite XT features are. We got overlays. We got emoji support. We don't have emoji support yet, but that's cool. <laughs> Mapping pages, uh, tons of hype, rapid prototyping. What about video recording? That's a <laughs> wonderful feature. Love the uh, repeat, repeat grid. grid. We yes. featured that earlier. It's a really powerful tool. We've got background blur, so keep it going. Keep these features going, and we'll be announcing the winner in just a minute or two. So thank you for participating. It's super easy to win here, and today we got this lovely, lovely little doodle bag is what we're calling it, the XD doodle <laughs> bag, where I would put inks, you would put pencils, mm -hmm. and we would bring it with us wherever we go to draw in the world. Yes. <laughs> Cool, so we got some integration stuff, video recording, um, background blur again. Nice, and so thank you for participating. I think it's time to announce the winner now. So we got the winner of this lovely bag in front of us. Katie, would you like to do the honors? And the winner is Blake Barr. Blake Barr, congratulations! Yay! You win this wonderful doodle bag. Yay, thank you for participating. And please tune in to the next stream for another chance to win. And we always have these participation giveaways. So please participate, join us. Mm -hmm. It's a ton of fun to get these really cute goodies. <laughs> um, and congratulations again to Blake. Congrats. Woohoo. <laughs> and don't forget, we have now the challenge up next. So if you go to the challenge tab, you'll see that the competition is all about creating a carnival application. We have some stock assets That's for so you. Cool. And we would love to see what you can create. And please mm -hmm. use the skills you learned today here with Katie. Um, practice using XD. Let us know what features you mm -hmm. want. I'm looking forward to seeing that in just about 56 minutes. So get yes. your submissions in, please. Yes. <laughs> All right, and let's get back to designing with Katie. Yeah, so um, here, oh yeah, talking about symbols. Um, I created a little style guide, and it's not completely finished, but it just gives you an idea of the kinds of colors I'll be using, iconography. Um, these right here are ones I found on flaticon.com, and these ones down here are the mobile kit from I the iOS. Um, Kit, and you can find that on Behance. Let me show you. Nice, and we're gonna go over um, a style guide a little bit later today as we start working on the final designs. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how you put together a style guide. Blake asks if we can autograph it. I believe you're asking if Katie can autograph it, so Blake, let us know, and we can definitely have her sign it with a Sharpie <laughs> if that's something you want. Um, Daniel has a question about translating the background blur in CSS. Um, so that's more of a development question. Generally, if you have hex code values in your XD file and you do the design spec um, link creation, you're able to use those hex values in CSS for um, web development. And so if you Google how to create a background blur in CSS using hex values, you should be able to just pull those in, I believe. Um, but I'm not a web development expert, so uh, I think Google will be your best friend for that kind of question. What I'm doing here is, um, for the profile, I'm thinking that if someone who isn't your friend searches you on the app, they can follow you. So um, I'm making a follow button right now. And Victor asked about Adobe Color being integrated into XD. Um, yep, I believe Adobe Live mm -hmm. answered your question, but yes, you have the ability to save your different palettes and you can bring those into any Adobe product, which is super handy. And it's really cool because um, you can integrate different um, character styles, symbols, colors right here on the left bar. Um, if you select like this black um, square right here, you can add it to your colors and 
you see how it's added the black color right here. Yeah, it's so really now you cool. have your beginnings of a style guide within your document in mm -hmm. the assets panel. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, the <laughs> assets panel is a very powerful tool and the assets team at Adobe is super rad. They're all great designers. <laughs> I played soccer with Kelly. She was super cool. She scored all the goals too. She was really good. <laughs> okay, so now we have the profile uh, designed and we're gonna move on to our, let's check our user flow because this will remind us how our designs are going to look like. So, okay, we have our profile then we're going to work on the friends list. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you guys design a friends list? Yeah, I'm curious. How would you organize the information? Mm -hmm. What would you want on the friends list? So, um, my idea when I think of a friends list, I think I want to see the ones that I that are most active within the app. Oh yeah. And then I want to see the ones that, um, well, everyone who's connected to my Facebook. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. When you use an app, and I I play words with friends now. Recently, I reinstalled it. I love that it pushes up the people that have used it recently and shows you the last time they interacted with the app so you know how frequent of a user they are. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really smart way to approach it. So then we have this. And then what you can do is you can select objects from the previous artboard. So I'm selecting the title above and the little bar at the bottom, copying it. And when you click on the next artboard, you can paste it and it drops exactly in the same position that it was in the previous artboard. Super easy. And Voodoo okay. Val says maybe the people who are online should go at the top of the friends list, which also makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. I like that. So, oops. So here I'm selecting this uh, circle and clicking shift option which lets you uh, copy the exact shape. And I'm moving it to this side, resizing it, making it a bit smaller, like this. And then Shift, Option, dragging it down. What's really cool is that it shows you exactly the dimension between the two shapes, so that's awesome. Yeah, I have a question for you, Katie. Yeah, sir. So it seems like an opportunity to use a repeat grid. Is there any reason you wouldn't use the repeat grid here, or? You know, I'm so used to not using it because I uh, have been using another program, but now that I'm using XD, that's a great tool, and I totally forgot that, you know, that I should use it, but you're right. Thanks for reminding oh, me. Oh, no problem. I just, I think there are probably some use cases where you might not want to use it if you're not um, creating exact duplicates. Maybe there's some variety in what you're creating. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe you can give an example of when you would not use a repeat grid, even though it may look similar. Um, maybe if you have different buttons for different um, states or something like that. So when you do the repeat grid, it doesn't, um, oh, it does, does it? It groups them together? Yes. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you can move all of them at the same time. That's awesome. It's very cool, yeah. Yeah. I love this. And, you know, when you start using a program like XD, um, it's, so, it's so intuitive and easy to use. But you do have to remind yourself, okay, this exists because it's such a great tool that is going to save you time and it's very useful. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you know about adjusting padding between the different objects too, but if you click in between the objects, I believe, um, you can adjust the padding and space between them within the repeat grid. Let's see mm. if that's easy for us to figure out. So if you click on the repeat grid, um, 
Maybe click on the button repeat grid when you have it selected. On group? No. No. So, okay, I'll play around with XD to see if I can figure out how to activate that. But yeah, that's also a useful tool if you want to adjust the padding between different elements after creating a repeat grid. That's really cool. Oh, and also, uh, two new features came out. I believe it was two days ago? Yes. Which are really cool, and we will sh demonstrate you. Um, there are two. Uh, one is a... Um, an overlay, so you can create uh, like overlay buttons that pop up and that demonstrate maybe like a little a blurb about what that wireframe is about. Um, and there's also a uh, like the scroll. Yep, the, scrolling now. You can scroll With fixed, elements. fixed elements. So whenever you have a group like this, it's so easy to. Um, prototype because they will move together. And I like that about it. Yeah, Cody says he thinks the repeat grid is perfect for complex objects such as cards with more details and symbols, and that's his opinion. I would definitely agree with that. Um, I'm gonna share real quickly, because I have it working on my screen, where we can adjust the padding between elements. And so if you just click and drag, you oh, can actually so cool. move the spacing between all the elements, which is super handy. So maybe you want a cool pattern. That is so cool. You can do it very easily with the repeat grid. Cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> very powerful Thanks tool. So much, repeat Sarah. grid is really I cool. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. So let's test this out with our friends' names. So you select the, your friend's name, friend's name. Then we're going to select repeat grid. Oh, <laughs> can you do that with, yes, you can. Yeah, we can do it with any element. Any element. Which is really nice. Now try um, adjusting the spacing between them. That's wonderful. I love that. Yeah. That's so useful. Okay, so let's pretend they are exactly aligned. <laughs> okay, I like that. But uh, but now I'm curious. Can you edit the font size individually? Let's try it. So this is um. Yes, you can. It's Wait. gonna affect the whole it's grid. It's gonna affect the whole grid. That's true. All right, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> okay, you don't need to use a repeat grid for something like this if you want it to be different styles, that makes sense. Or you could always break it apart. Yeah, so if you wanted to, you could oh. ungroup the repeat grid, and then they would be treated like individual objects. So it's cool. Yeah. I like that. So it helps you get stuff on the page really quickly, but then you could move it around and adjust it as you see fit. I'm just gonna start all over because I think I really like the dragging of the 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 font. It's so easy too. You can just organize it like this. Yeah. So Joe mentioned actually the reason the repeat grid wasn't working with the padding for the circles is you had two circles grouped together, so it wasn't registering properly. So thanks, Joe. Oh, I didn't thanks, I didn't Joe. catch that. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, so you have your friends list. Then I think that you also want to be able to search for someone within the app. Yeah. So I'm going to create a search, a search bar up here. But I also want the search bar to mimic the size of this progression bar right here. So. I compared those two, and maybe move this down here. And then on my style guide, I was able to find some options for little icons that I could use throughout the app. So I found this really cute, um, Magnifying glass. I'm just going to add it to 
to the search bar. And now another thing that I um, discovered is that whenever you bring in objects to your asset bar right here on the left, for instance, uh, right here I have a few little icons, like this mountain. You can't resize it because the icon is grouped together. So what you should do is you right click it and ungroup the symbol. Then it allows you to resize it, change its color and all of that. So if something isn't moving within the artboard, make sure to ungroup it. Alrighty, then we have, um, so we have your food preference list, you have your profile, you have your friends list. Then we are moving to the, the last icon in this bar is going to be um, your favorites. So nice. restaurants that you favorited, this is going to be where you can click and look at those restaurants. Um, so moving back to my mood board, I want to find a, a visual representation that closely, um, that will resemble closely what I'm thinking this favorite uh, wireframe should look like. So uh, don't be afraid to copy a style. I think it's really cool to find things that you really like and take inspiration from that. Yeah, I completely agree. So I'm looking at this picture and I really like the way the visuals are right there and it gives you a little, um, kind of like a rating tool, I think. I don't know, it's probably my interpretation. Yeah, I mean, if that's what you like about it too, then that's the inspiration you're pulling from it. But also in the real world, you don't want to do this. You don't want it to be just about your interpretation because you will have to design uh, with the, the, uh, the user, the target audience in mind. So uh, first is your design is informed by the research that you did prior yep. to that. The research of getting frustrated with uh, all your friends not having dietary restrictions and you having to go out of your way to search for stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any stories on on a time where it took you forever to find a restaurant? Sometimes I just give up and I'll go to a restaurant that might not have as many options for me or I'll bite the bullet and actually have dairy even though it's not great for me. So mm -hmm. yeah, usually it's uh, more of a pain than um, it's worth going out of my way to solve for. But generally, I know what restaurants mm -hmm. I like and I know which restaurants are friendly for my dietary restrictions. I'll suggest those. Mm -hmm. But it's tough. What about you, Katie? Me too. I hate uh, bothering people. I really don't want to be um, like, a, like the person that stops the group from finding a place to eat. Yeah. So I typically stay quiet until I'm at the restaurant and if there are no options, I get french fries, which <laughs> isn't a bad, <laughs> it's, it's not so like bad, the bad solution, but either, you so. know. It would be preferred if you could have like a delicious salad or delicious uh, vegetarian mm. meal of some sort where you have a bunch of vegetables, mm. a bunch of spices, people who know how to cook uh, delicious vegetarian options. That would be amazing. Yeah. But also I feel like nowadays more and more, People are aware of other people's needs, so yes. that's awesome. It is really cool. Okay. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Hello. Here I'm using this, uh, this little tool to kind of give me more space. So I'm taking inspiration from this image right here, which is a little blurry, but you can kind of get the idea of what I want to um, see. So I want to see the restaurant, the rating, and I want to have the little heart that tells me, okay, I really like this restaurant. It's my fave. 
Hi, Claire. Thank you. Claire mentions it's really amazing to listen to us while working. <laughs> Thank you. I hope we're entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, informative and entertaining at the same time. Exactly. The best comment. And also, please um, be active in the chat. We would love to start a conversation with you if you have any questions, if you have any ideas. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Yeah. Any questions, especially about UX process? Katie's an expert, so grab her while you can. <laughs> And don't forget about the challenge today. Uh, again, we're working on some Carnival mobile application screens. We already have a submission by Mayhill, and it looks awesome. So please get your submissions in when they're ready. Another um, suggestion is that if you think that you will use the repeat grid tool, for any design element, make sure to finish that design element before duplicating it. So as you can see here, I'm copying and pasting the heart uh, because I didn't really think about, okay, is this element ready to go? Is it ready to uh, be duplicated? Be du duplicated? So remember to, <laughs> to finish the idea before you move on. But I. I really like getting everything out there, and um, yeah, I forget to. I think it's part of the process too, though, right? It's fun to work things out and to uh, have to do some of these maybe rote tasks, but it's relaxing and makes you think about it as you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's part of the process. We have a question from Daryl about tips for a graphic designer transferring to a UX designer role, and I think Mark is also asking the same question. For a graphic designer trans. Transitioning to UX design. Yep. Um, yes. So I think that you have to have an innate feeling that you want to always be learning about UX design. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday. Do you need to have a UX uh, background to do UI design? Or do you want to learn UX to apply it to other things? Do you want to... Um, utilize the UX mindset and apply it to uh, designing a user experience for um, maybe, I don't know. Mm, Things outside of just screens. Yeah, physical, physical experience. experiences. Like you mentioned yesterday, you can design um, a mirror that lights up as you walk close to it, and that is a user experience. Isn't It's interactive, it's um, probably creating a solution to someone that's getting closer to the mirror. It's um, human-centered design, and I keep saying that, but it's really true. So whenever you want to transition into UX design, for me, it was really helpful to hold back on the design aspect of it because it's so easy to get caught up in, okay, yeah, I'm such a great designer. How can I make something pretty? And in UX design, it's not about the end result, it's about the process. So really think about that. And um, yeah. we both took a general assembly course. We did, yes. You did the opposite, I did. didn't you? So I transitioned from UX into more UI, whereas Katie did UI into UX. So we have both sides of the coin here. Mm -hmm. um, I think boot camps are, or online courses are a great way to do those transitions if you feel like you need some support in making sure that you know the workflow. But Absolutely. Where General Assembly comes in handy. But I know yesterday you talked also about if there aren't those boot camps available, mm -hmm. using the internet as a resource, watching these streams, participating. Yes. Those are all great ways to help transition your role and get to know what it means to be mm -hmm. a UX designer or a UI designer compared to what you're doing today. Yes. And I love the I love this program for that reason is that it's so easy to use. You can just play around with every uh, feature and you can teach yourself. Actually, Hebe, uh, who was here before I was, she's self-taught, which is so great. Um, so yeah, I highly encourage you to um, YouTube UX tutorials, maybe talk to UX designers, get their feedback on your designs, and um, really read about the UX 
uh, process because it's gonna help you in the long run. Yeah, that's all great advice. But as a um, UX designer who studied graphic design, how has that helped you in graphic design? Yeah, I have a weird background. So I actually majored in medical illustration in college. So I dissected cadavers, observed surgeries, but also took 3D art and web design and illustration courses. Um, I felt like because I didn't study traditional graphic design in college, mm -hmm. I had started doing UX design in my career through medical illustration. And then mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I understood color theory, composition, um, basic uh, UI fundamentals to feel confident jumping into that space. And so I took the General Assembly class and I feel like I learned a lot about um, how presentation can, can really help convey meaning and can help convey a story. So I feel like That's I good. learned a lot about storytelling, I learned a lot about color theory, I learned a lot about how to apply the skills I'd learned um, to to what I already knew as a UX designer. And so I also watched YouTube videos. Skillshare is something that Mark mentioned, which is a great resource. So I think it's also about the confidence you have in a specific area. I always feel like the best way to learn something is to do it. Mm -hmm. So maybe give yourself a project, participate in these challenges, um, create something and see how you feel about it and see what you want to learn, because yeah. I think that's a good way to learn. Go to hackathons, meetups. You have so many resources out there. And if you don't, um, look for communities online. There are tons out there. But something interesting is that design is driven by emotions. So whether you come from a UX background or a graphic design background, they both, um, you, you design for someone. So whenever you have that, uh, that, that uh, thing that you're designing for, um, I think it's, you know, an easy transition between both fields. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely passionate about the space, you're passionate about conveying ideas, so they marry very well. It's not like you want to learn like woodworking or, uh, I don't know, accounting. It's, it's very tied together, so it's easy to bleed into one of those roles with the work that you're doing in, in one role, so I think it's good to want to study both. Yeah. And it's funny because whenever I go out with my friends and we stumble upon a like hard situation, we say, how can we UX this? How can we solve this problem? Or like it, whenever we see, uh, like we go to a restaurant and the service isn't as great, we're like, oh, how can we UX this? How can we Becomes like, a verb. shorten the, the queue so we can order quicker? You know, yeah. So you can you can use UX in everything <laughs> in life. Cool. Um, hackathons are great. Blake wants to learn woodworking now. That's really cool. <laughs> but let's jump back into XD, and maybe you can learn some skills here that you can apply to the challenge today, and then you'll be on your way to learning more about UX and UI. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So. Jumping back to this, uh, we are designing the favorite restaurant. Restaurants that you've favorited, you want to go back to. Um, so these are going to tell you, OK, this is the rating, and um, the rating, why you've liked it. Let's see. Um, I have not downloaded star, star icons, so I'm just going to use squares for now. Let's do five stars here. Yeah. Okay. And we have our restaurant name right here. And you mentioned there's a uh, um, what do you call it? Um, a text, like a copy. Uh, Character style? No. Something that checks your... Spell your check? Sp spell check. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, spell check, I think, is just if you go to, um, let's see, edit, maybe, in the top. Edit. Cool. 
This is awesome. Oh, wait. Let's, let's spell this wrong. I think Sarah is your spell check. I don't think it's in there. Oh. It's not? It's NXT. I was oh, incorrect. No. We don't have spell check NXT, so double check your words and go to user voice to provide that feedback that you want that spell check because I know I make typos all the time. So thank you, Paul, for correcting us on that. Paul's over here helping us out. I was so excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. More to add on to what we want out yep. of this program. User voice is a great place to give your feedback. So if you want spell check, definitely vote for it there. And the XD team sees all that feedback and prioritizes it. So Voodoo says, hi, Paul. <laughs> yeah. um. <laughs> what else is going on? Ask us questions. Yeah. Thank Tell you. us things. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mark, for suggesting a Skillshare class. I'm not too familiar with all the different classes that are on Skillshare, but I know it's a great resource. LinkedIn just announced um, an education platform where they're doing Skillshare-esque videos. I don't know too much mm -hmm. about that, but it looks promising as well. Um, I was checking out some of their ZBrush stuff because I like 3D stuff. But yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> so there's something about uh, working and presenting at the same time. That is something I would love to learn on Skillshare. Are there any presentation classes? Yeah, public speaking is really important, presentation, mm -hmm. providing. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see. But yeah, the fun part when you're designing is that you're gonna run into situations where you have to go back and edit things, but that's okay. It's super easy with XD. Yeah, that's part of the process too. I feel like yeah. doing some of these tasks is really relaxing to me. It's fun. What does chat do to relax? Do you work on designs? <laughs> do you draw? Do you read? I listen because to music. Music, yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of music? Is it usually a genre of some sort? Mm, I like um, all kinds. Nice. Rock. So whatever mood you're in, you'll listen mm -hmm. to different music. The Beatles are perfect for any situation. Yeah, the music there they have is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And they have a bunch of different moods, too. Yeah, what Voodoo? is your favorite music? Yeah, Voodoo mentions we have 30 minutes left for the challenge, just as a reminder, less than 30 minutes actually, so please get those in if you want us to look at those in just a little bit. Yeah, I'm excited to see those. Yeah, definitely. Daryl's learning how to paint digitally, that's a lot of fun. Maybe you have a Wacom tablet or an iPad, uh, there are a bunch of different ways you can draw digitally nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And um, I do hand-drawn illustrations, and you can import them to these programs and also create um, some beautiful illustrations. patterns and different things. Yep, it's always fun to draw little sketches or doodles for your designs. I feel like they complement each other really well too, mm -hmm. the skills of illustration and design. Yeah. And sometimes when you do digital art, you can incorporate it with hand-drawn stuff and it looks the contrast looks really cool. Like the the linear the lines that you do with pen pen and paper yeah. are so organic that in contrast with mm, clean shapes. Clean shapes is really fantastic. Yeah, nice. We got Joshua doing flat design illustration and illustrator. That sounds like a lot of fun. 
Maybe bring those flat designs into Photoshop Sketch and use Kyle Webster's brush pack to do some organic brush shapes on top. That would be really cool. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, Kyle Thanks Webster's brushes advice. are so cool. I love them. I've been using the dry brush pack lately to do some landscape drawings. It's been so fun. Yeah. yeah. You need to teach me. I, I <laughs> Sure. Yeah, we can talk about it after the stream. I'll show yes. you my Instagram. <laughs> Um, okay, so now we've designed um, one of the last wireframes, but the most important wireframe that we need to talk about is how are people actually going to find a restaurant? Yeah. So um, as you can see right here, this is the discover button, and it's going to activate the wireframe where you can um, select your friends and then prompt the restaurant discoverability through the restaurant discoverability button. I'm just making these, uh, these words up. <laughs> no, I hope fun. it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to copy this little shape. And this is actually going to be the button that's going to search for the restaurant. Nice. Thank you. So Mark's asking if you're using the eight point grid system, but I think you're just doing wireframes at this point, so we're just getting everything on the page. We're not following any guidelines yet, but you are keeping them in mind, I assume, when you're working on the wireframes yes. generally. Yes, absolutely. How is it looking so far? It's looking good, yeah. We're getting everything on the page. We'll probably jump into the final visual design tomorrow. So check in tomorrow if you want to see us converting these wireframes to final designs. Um, and Sandesh mentions, it's amazing how many UI design tutorials there are all over the web, but most of them teach a tool mm -hmm. or the tools instead of the design process. And I would generally agree with you um, I feel like that's why boot camps like General Assembly and um, I don't know too many other ones, but they exist to teach the process. Mm -hmm. IDEO has some great online courses which actually do teach the process. Um, but yeah, a lot of people focus on the tool. I'm a firm believer that it doesn't matter what tool you're using, it's mm -hmm. all about the skills you have as a designer. So even if you're given a whiteboard or a pencil and a piece of paper, you should be able to do the same sort of work as you can do with a computer and XD. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to have XD because it's so fast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I have so many friends too that uh, can't draw, um, like on a paper, but they are so good at doing wireframes and uh, at graphic design. So, um, yeah, you you can design in any way. Yeah, any shape medium. And form. Any medium, exactly. Yeah. Um, we have questions about the grid system in XD, and Daryl's asking if we can show an example of the eight-point grid system. Um, I'm not too familiar with the grid system. I don't know if you are, Katie, but that's probably something that we could cover tomorrow, or do you feel like covering it today? Yeah, we can cover it tomorrow. Cool. Um, but here you can... I just um, showed the layout grid, and this can help you visualize how you're laying things out as you're going. Yep. Um, which is really cool. There's also a grid system which will overlay a grid onto your layout and then there are guidelines for different operating systems. Mm -hmm. So Apple follows different ones than Android. Mm -hmm. When we do final visual designs, we can go into the details of how you could prep your files for developers and for development. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you have more questions about the grid system, um, feel free to check out tutorials online on Adobe, and we'll go into those details tomorrow, so tune in. Yeah. All righty. So I'm almost done here. And um, how much time do we have left before? We have about 20 minutes before the challenge, so get those submissions in, All too. All right. I'm really excited to see those, because yesterday we had really great designs. Yeah, we did, and I'm looking forward to the ones today. They seem super fun. Mm -hmm. So maybe we go through all the wireframes you've created, and I would love to talk about how you put together the style guide. Sure, absolutely. We do have two more wireframes that I need to add on oh, to. Oh, okay, cool. But um, I can definitely talk through what I have so far, and then... Um, well, let's 
Let's do the two that are left and then we yeah. can go through them all. Does that sound good? Sure, yes. Cool. So again, I'm going back to my mood board. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I love this because we are designing together at the same time. So this hasn't been premeditated. Um, you can absolutely, obviously, sketch things out as I've done here to I get a sure. just, yeah, to get a, an idea of how you want your app to look like. Yeah, do you want to put it here and I'll show it on the GoPro? Yes. Great, so these are the wireframes you created that are super, super cute. Yes. Oh, and also, um, this is kind of embarrassing because I did a whole like little story on the wireframes. Should I? Sh oh, that's not embarrassing see? at all. That's part of storytelling. That's part <laughs> of the UX process. It's so extra that I did this, but. <laughs> It's good. Mm -hmm. Great, so let's look at your stuff. Wow, this is cute, yeah. This is awesome. Thank you. So this is the scope, the strategy, the user flow. And as you can see, some of my wireframes mimic what I already have right here. And um, I like creating these um, story flows because it reminds me what I want to do. Yeah. Um, so we start off with the launch screen, the, the login, and sign up with Facebook. Then we have the user identity Facebook manager, which I completely skipped because um, for the sake of this, design, we don't really need it. But in real life, you probably do. You do, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Then we have step four, which is the profile. It's Facebook generated with pro, it's Facebook generated. The profile showcases, showcases your food interests and top food categories. And then moving on to this one, you can see your profile right here. And this one is um, kind of like what I was telling you with the top categories. So we have coffee, vegetarian, vegan, ice cream. You and weren't lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then as you can see, we have the list. And I changed it on the actual wireframes that I'm designing on XD because Again, as you're going, you can always change your design. So be open to um, adapting. adapting and changing your mind. And that's actually part of the UX mindset is never stick with one idea. Be open to new ideas. Yeah, do you have any favorite quotes? I like the quote, um, strong opinions loosely held. So have like strong opinions one. about what you like, but also be available to change or adapt if it's not the right one. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite quotes is, um, oh my gosh, it's, uh, it always depends. Yeah. Because it does. In UX, everything depends because it can, uh, it can work for one thing, but it probably doesn't work for another thing. Yeah, and there are multiple solutions for a lot of these problems. So it's not about the quote unquote right solution, it's about the right for that moment and that audience and for that problem for that time period. So design is a always ongoing, never ending project. So it's fun. You never have anything um, turn stale, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I love these sketches you did. Thank you. So this gives you an idea um, like a little bit of color to showcase the design. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. And so this is part of the user flow. This could be considered a use case in some other terminology mm -hmm. or a story. It's basically just a story of how someone would want to use this application. Yeah. <laughs> Beauty's favorite quotes, quote is, you're a wizard, Frodo, Captain Kirk. <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate. It feels like a combination and culmination of a wonderful plethora of nerdy things, but good quote. 15 minutes until the challenge deadline. Yeah, we've got a lot of submissions already, that's so thank so you exciting. for participating. A lot of familiar faces in here, so thank you. Oh, um, Sandesh is asking if they can if they can watch the recording live stream after 
this time period? And yes, you can. Yep. Um, I believe Matthias answered that question. So on Creative Cloud YouTube, you can watch all the previous streams. They're all recorded. They're there forever for my embarrassment. Um, oh my but yeah, gosh. you can watch them whenever you'd like. <laughs> Um, Nasir's favorite quote is, just start. That's another good one. You just need to do it. Just mm -hmm. do it. Nike, you got it right. Just I love start. that. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Any other favorite quotes from the listeners and chatters? We'd love to hear them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... So I really like this interface, and I'm going to take a lot of inspiration from this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it and bring it over to this file over here. And then another inspiration I like is this one up here. I really like the way this showcases. Um, it looks like a recipe. But um, it also looks like there's other options below that that you can like swipe left to see. So I like that uh, feature. I like the interaction with your finger. I think it's really cool. We're gonna grab that inspiration from our mood board, which we covered yesterday. Voodoo's got some killer quotes. Don't let your dreams be dreams. I feel like that's from a video where a guy goes like this a little bit. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's pretty hilarious. Um, and I forget the actor's name, but he went a little bit cuckoo, I feel like. But don't let your dreams be dreams is perfectly accurate. I think that's a good quote to live by. Mm -hmm. And Mark mentions one day or day one, you choose. I like oh, that. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another good quote, a more realistic quote, is how you live your day is how you live your life, which I really like, and it really kicks me into gear because mm -hmm. no one has time anymore. We're all tired. There's not much time in the day. Um, but how you live your day is really how you live your life because the days will keep passing, and unless you actively make a decision every day to do a certain thing, it's going to fall to the back burner. Mm -hmm. um, so I like that quote. And Mark... Yeah mentioned the only stupid question is the one you didn't ask. Oh, that's so true. That's so true, that's so, so good. True. There's no stupid questions. Clarification is very important. We can only communicate by our words, so ask all the questions you need to to understand mm -hmm. something. Um, Absolutely. Nasir's favorite quote is, you are your own success or failure. <gasps> I also love very that. True. And don't be, um, what's, I don't know. <laughs> it's don't be the person that holds you back from reaching your dreams. Like, don't let fear hold you back. Hold you back and come in between who you are now and who you want to be in the future. Completely agree with that. I actually have a tattoo right here on my forearm Whoa. that says, Fear is the Mind Killer, which is part of the mantra of fear from the sci fi book Dune, because I'm a super nerd. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I will. That's awesome. Let's do the GoPro, that'll be easier. Fear is the mind killer. So Dune is an amazing book and there's a whole litany of fear which basically says, let fear pass through you so only you remain after you've consumed and accepted your fear. And I've uh, been inspired enough to get a tattoo of it. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do y'all have any really cool tattoos that inspire you? On your day to day? Yeah, maybe you do. Matthias's quote is by Homer, which is trying is the first step towards failure. Yep, oh. you've got to try and be bad at something before you'll be good at something. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, I love Seth Godin. Are any of y'all familiar? He's amazing. You should YouTube him. He has uh, really cool videos that talk about how to dance with fear. And oh. he uh, describes it to be something that we can't, um, yeah, we can't avoid, but we can carp com compartmentalize. We can put it in these boxes and, uh, yeah, don't let it get in the way. You can always come back and you should come back and learn how to um, overcome that by uh, exposing yourself to situations that you are afraid yeah. of. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, the mindset of mm, exposure 
little by little until you eventually don't really care about that fear anymore. It doesn't phase you. Yeah, you said that was Seth Godin, right? Yes, yeah, Seth Godin. I gotta check him out. He's a marketing mogul, but he's really awesome, and I like, I like the way he expresses himself. Yeah. I feel like fear is a very um, common theme that a lot of people deal with and even being on like a stream like this there's fear involved because we're exposing ourselves to a giant audience and so mm -hmm. it's all about putting yourself in those situations where you have a bit of fear so that you push yourself to grow. Yeah. yeah. Don't get ashamed of your work. It is your own masterpiece. Another good quote. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. It is your own masterpiece. Be proud of everything you produce because you're putting your creativity and putting your um, self out into the world, which is really, really great. That's great. We should come up with an Adobe inspirational quote book and <laughs> give it away in the next challenge. That yeah, would be awesome. That would be really fun, yeah. I love quotes, I love inspirational quotes. I'm gonna plaster my new office with a bunch of quotes that I maybe draw myself. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Cool, we have two screens left and we have eight minutes before the challenge deadline, so I think that we can do this. Mm -hmm. And we'll be done all the wireframes today. And again, tomorrow we'll be jumping into the final designs. We'll go over the style guide um, that Katie put together and we'll start prototyping, linking some of these artboards together, using some of those maybe new features of the overlay and fixed elements for headers, footers, and other elements that you want to have stick to the page. Yeah. Got it's some more quotes. These are amazing quotes by Thomas. Uh, there's. Let's see? Thomas Benner, your old professor, right? Hi, Mr. Benner. <laughs> Mr. Benner. <laughs> there are no stupid questions or dumb problems. What a good quote. And mm -hmm. I can tell you're a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Anything in life worth having is worth working for by Travis. Mm -hmm. um, that's also a really gro great quote. You need to work for the things that are worthwhile. Nothing in life is easy, or nothing mm -hmm. that is easy is worth it. Um, maybe there are some things that are worth it that are easy, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good things take time, that's another one. Yes, good things definitely do take time. Mm -hmm. Time more than anything is about showing up. Yeah. Great and also, quotes. another thing to keep in mind is that maybe you don't, you can't see the future, but if you were exposed to everything that's gonna happen to you, then you probably wouldn't work as hard. So it's good to work hard. It gives you motivation, it gives you purpose in life, so definitely, Mm, put yourself out there, try new things. Yeah, completely agree with you. If you think good design is expensive, you should look at the cost of bad design. Great quote, Oh my Mark. gosh, yes. I've heard that one before and it is very yes. true. It is way more that. expensive to do a bad job. <laughs> do or do not, there is no try. Yeah, I, I think that's a good one too. I like the message behind it. Um, just do it, again. Mm -hmm. Gotta do this hand motion. Just do <laughs> it, just do it. I'm gonna be embarrassed for the rest of my life for this, but that's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh, I watched a little glimpse of mm, last episode. Yeah. So cringy. <laughs> no, you did a great job. I'm very happy to be here with you, Katie. Thank you, you are awesome, Sarah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Great, so what are the last two screens we're working on here? Here we are working on um, the actual page you get when you see, oh wait, I skipped a step. Okay, this is the last one. Before, we're gonna take this inspiration, create a little box right here. And this is gonna showcase the restaurant uh, recommendation. So we're gonna have five restaurant recommendations that you can flip through and um, select to see more about the restaurant. Nice. Kind of gives you those Tinder vibes with the Swiping. swipe. Swiping. It's a really great mobile gesture. They definitely made it more popular, but I feel like it's a perfect gesture for mobile devices. Matthias has a quote from the Max opening, which is Adobe's conference. Your canvas is everywhere in a way that was never possible before, and every story can reach every single surface by Chantanou. Um, mm -hmm. That's a really inspirational quote. I'm glad they showed that at Max. Ooh, I like that next one. 
Nasir says, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door and knock it yourself. That is awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. Build it yourself, do it yourself, because mm -hmm. no one else will take initiative for something that you care about, or yeah. maybe they will, but you have the opportunity to create your own destiny, and exactly. I think that's a great quote to represent that. And no one can read your mind, that's another thing. We feel like our micro interactions can really express how we're feeling, but no, yeah. <laughs> especially if you're blind like me, it takes me a lot to figure out how someone is feeling. So I, I like it when they reach out to me and they talk to me. I think it's so important yeah. in communication. Yeah, communication is key. I love building mm -hmm. up a networking community. So thank you for being part of my community, everyone. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul over here. Everything happens for a reason, but sometimes that reason is because you're dumb and make bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> yep, harsh over here. Paul smirking and laughing in the corner. Tell us about a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, everyone makes mistakes, everyone makes bad decisions, mm -hmm. but as long as you learn from them, I'm cool with it. I'd rather make a mistake and learn from it than not do anything at all. For sure. So I think and it's, sometimes it's not wrong. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. you think you did something bad, but turns out to be part of the story, you know? Yeah, and stories need some ups and downs in order to be interesting, so mm -hmm. it's all part of storytelling. Yeah, I can give you so many examples, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, uh, at a later healthy. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's healthy for sure. You learn a lot. It's good to fail at least once to know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but then those things don't even phase you anymore. You're over them, you're, you've you moved on, and you're mm, into bigger and better things and stronger. And I think that that's a really good thing to remind yourself as a beginner uh, in design, that you're always gonna get um, critique, you're gonna get feedback, but don't be, don't be sad when it's not good feedback, you know? Yeah. Allow yourself to grow from that. People are only giving you feedback because they care enough to give you feedback. Exactly. And I always try to remember that, even when I don't love the feedback that I'm getting, at least they took the time to provide me feedback, which is them trying to better me. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it's not hateful in intention, generally feedback is about yeah. growing you and helping you. So it's all about learning and learning is the best. <laughs> Great, we only have about a minute 30 left before the submission deadline, so get those in if you want us to take a peek at them today. Otherwise, um, next up we have Sarah and Lindsay. They'll be looking at some challenge submissions as well, so you can always make it for the next stream uh, right after us. So now I'm adding restaurant suggestion right here. It's just a placeholder. Um, I need to think about the copy that I want every single wireframe to have. Uh, so yeah, this is restaurant suggestion panel. It's really cool. Um, I love this part of the process. Yeah, it's fun getting your ideas down. Mm -hmm. Brian is saying he's looking for a replay of the Photoshop to XD conversion stream. Can't seem to find. Hey Brian, I think you can just right click your Photoshop file and open with XD or open up XD and open a Photoshop file and it should be able to convert it for you automatically. There's not many steps involved, but feel free to check out some tutorials on adobe.com or um, yeah, I think it's as straightforward as that, so it should be easy for you to try out. Okay, great. Just in time. So today, what have we done, Katie? We have gone through and created all these wireframes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've recapped what we did for day one where we talked about the UX process. And uh, yeah, how do you feel about how today went? Um, and we'll jump into the submission deadline, or the submissions after that. I think today went very well. We got so much done. Um, I'm excited about this. What do you guys think? Is this looking good? Is it something? I think something... it's looking great. Thank you. Is this something that you'd want to use eventually? Um, 
So when you're designing uh, user interfaces, take a moment to look for inspiration as I've been doing along the way. It may be daunting at first, but as you saw, I was working alongside with you and we were doing this together and Thank you for being part of the experience. Yeah, thank you so much. Tomorrow we'll be jumping into converting these wireframes to final designs. Mm -hmm. We'll also look at the style guide that Katie put together and we'll start prototyping this up by linking the different artboards. Mm -hmm. So thank you for participating today. Yeah, um, thank you so much. And let me just pull up the last of these submissions. We got a few that came in right at the end here. We got a lot of them though and I'm looking forward to going through them. We might need to go through them pretty quick since we do have so many. Mm -hmm. But if you don't make it um, for this stream, again, next stream they'll be also doing these entries and so you can play along with them. They'll give you feedback and you'll have another chance to win. The winner today will win a CC membership for a year, Adobe Creative Cloud membership for a year, which is an awesome prize. It gives you the ability to create some more beautiful prototypes. Um, so let's jump into it. Let's see these different yeah. submissions. First up, we have Mayhill. So Mayhill worked on this mobile design where we have a splash screen showing a summer carnival where we can sign up or log mm -hmm. in. Awesome. And we have three different screens here. So let's try to sign up. Oh, I think I skipped the sign up phase, but I jumped right into the application and I love this pink color scheme. What do you think, Katie? I love it. It's so I cute. It, <laughs> it is super cute. I like the illustrations that are going on. Mm -hmm. I think those are from the stock assets we gave you guys. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, we can scroll too a little bit, which is nice. And we can click on one of these to get a detail view. Nice. Mm -hmm. So I noticed on the first page, when I click on the application, it slides in from the left, which is a little bit strange in Western culture because normally we swipe um, to the right. And so I don't know if your audience is in the Western Hemisphere or somewhere else, but that might be something to consider. I love the search in the top. It looks like a traditional search. You have voice command ability. We have the title discover mm -hmm. and we have the back arrow. Um, it looks like the padding is a little bit inconsistent between the search and back arrow on the left side, so you might want to move the back arrow over slightly, maybe make the title a little bit bigger to be able to read it. Um, the buttons are very clear, but it looks like the buttons might be on top of some of these elements, which is a little bit different. Usually they're on the bottom, but overall I love the colors, everything's super readable, mm -hmm. and I love the layout, so good job here. Yeah, it's great. Oh, and definitely use the grid. Don't be afraid to make sure that everything's aligned. Yeah, the grid can help you with that, which yeah. we'll cover again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Volter oh, that's with cool. Sunday Fun Day. Nice. So we have the ability to sign in or log in with Facebook. Let's log in with Facebook. I'm logged in. Nice, we can pick our fun. We got radicals, bumper cars, carousel like wheels. I like this a lot. Let's I like see. the color scheme going on. The menu is very clear. We got options in the top right. I like the giant header with the title. Let's click on Radical's location. Nice, Ooh. we can see where it is on a map, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Got a roller coaster. I click on images. Oh, nice, we get shared <laughs> images of the roller coaster. That's, That's super amazing. cool. Get some embarrassing photos of people screaming on the roller coaster. <laughs> That is actually a brilliant idea. Yeah, let's see, what else can I click on here? I'm gonna just go through the screens to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, okay, so oh, we can have a location address maybe here, yep. Yeah. Nice. So we have a popover on the map, which is nice too. Very cool, overlays, getting fancy. <laughs> nice, next up we have Ildico. Il Let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So here we have a multicultural carnival. This looks awesome. I like the dark colors and I like the pink vibrantness uh, giving a lot of modern. contrast. Yeah, it's a similar layout to the last app where we have the horizontal um, hamburger menu in the top left. We have search, but we have a big CTA to buy tickets, which I like a lot. Mm -hmm. So if I click on buy tickets, oh, this oh, is that's nice. Awesome. Very really clean, like nice. We have different day passes. If we go back, 
we can click on the menu. Nice. Mm. We can see all the different parts of the application. Looks like we can click on schedule. This is really clean. I like that. I, I really like, like the colors. I don't know if you can s tell right here. There's like a, a line that shows you. Oh, yeah. Um, it's like a timeline for time the schedule. Line, yeah. So there's a it's subtle really cool. line in between these dots to indicate that this is a timeline. Very cool. I think that's all the screens. Let me double check. Yeah, this is fantastic. Great job, Ildilko. Nice. Next up is Joshua. Oh, I like that too. Very cool. So we have the carnival. We have a lot of pages on this one. We can enter and we have rides, shows, eats, and help. Nice, we have a menu mm -hmm. on the bottom. Let's go to rides. Got a bunch of different rides and we have a location as well. So let's check out the location of the Ferris wheel. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, nice. I see this back button, but it's a little bit hard to read. Um, so that might be, it might be good to make it a little bit larger or use the traditional back arrow. Mm -hmm. Be easier to fit on the screen and maybe you could put that in the top left here. But I like the map. I like that you can see the location. Maybe changing the location indicator color to be different than the roads would also help it stand out a little mm -hmm. bit more. But yeah, let's see. Next is shows. Got different shows. It's the same list here. They're uh, all free. Oh, except one's five dollars. Bluegrass. So <laughs> yeah, the bluegrass jamming is a little <laughs> bit more expensive. Nice. So we got the shows. I know there are a bunch more pages. Let's see how I get to them. Um, if I go back to enter, hmm, let's go through these pages. Rides, Ferris wheel, shows. Oh, bluegrass jamming. We could have clicked on that to see some ticket buying. Mm. So I like the layout here with the type of ticket, the price, and the quantity, but I feel like this could be a lot larger because it's a little hard to read on this screen. I like the ability to buy with Apple Pay compared to buying just online. Um, but yeah, this could be a little bit bigger. Um, the price especially because it's hard to read and you want to know how much money you're going to spend on this. It looks like we have a lot of space at the top too, so we could move a lot of this stuff up to fill that space, especially since the busyness of the photo interacts with the content, so the higher we can have the content into this solid background color would be helpful. Is there an Apple Pay icon? Maybe you can incorporate that? Yeah, that would be really good to have. Um, it's better and easier representation, so you don't need to type everything out. But let's press Buy Now with Apple Pay. Nice, we get an overlay That's sliding really out cool. from the bottom. Very cool. So we have the card information, shipping information, contact, a lot more price information. It looks like some of this got cut off a little bit. And you can pay with Touch ID. This is a lot going on, so good job yeah. with all this. Very cool. Let's pay with Touch ID. Nice, my order is confirmed. Awesome, I love this. Joshua? Yeah. Yeah, Joshua. Joshua. I also would love icons in the bottom navigation. I feel like we've given a lot of UI kits for icons in streams in the past, so you can find a ton on Behance, on Adobe Stock. A bunch of them are free, and you can pull in different representations other than just the stars. But let's go back to shows. Okay, so we have buttons added here now that are very tiny. We have buy tickets and show ticket. This, um, this to me is a little bit hard to read and maybe it gets so much bigger that you can expand this section of the list and have the button take up the full width of the mobile screen because right now it's really hard to see and when you tap on stuff on a phone with your thumb, I have big thumbs. I'm gonna hit all those buttons when I try to hit the one. <laughs> so let's see what happens when we click show ticket. I like this screen though, it's super clear, um, very vibrant. It'll be easy for them to scan this QR code. Mm -hmm. You can easily see what you've purchased. Yeah. Nice. And so I think that's all the screens. This is a lot. Thank you for putting this together, Joshua. You used all the new features too, so congratulations mm -hmm. on that. Next we have Daryl with the Witchford Summer Festival 18. Nice. 
What do you think of the background pattern? It's very festival-y. Yeah, I like the, the pattern. I like the typeface. I like mm -hmm. that you use something unique for a festival. It's fun. Yeah, very fun. The button's very clear, very big. Mm -hmm. We're gonna click enter. Nice. Oh, <laughs> that's really fun. Yeah. So we have the menu in the top right, which isn't usually where it's located, so that's interesting to mm -hmm. see. Normally you'd see it in the top left. Let's click on it and see what happens. Visually oh. speaking, it looks very family friendly, and I like that about it. It does look very family friendly. Everything's big and colorful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is really fantastic. I think it was placed on the right because when you open the menu, you have your back arrow on the left, mm -hmm. which makes sense. I wonder if there's a way around that where you can do both, but yeah, that works for me. And when you open up this, there's a ton of stuff. So let's click on what's on. Or I think it just, oh, <laughs> I clicked on fun. So now we're in fun and we're in bumper cars, which is really cool. It requires two tokens for minimum age six, unless with an adult, that's important. You need an adult with bumper cars. <laughs> I like the clear label at the top, so you know what section you're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this a lot. It looks like you can scroll. Oh, maybe, yeah. You're intending that you can scroll through mm -hmm. the different cards, which is really cool. All right, let's go back to the main page and let's click on, oh, we can scroll here too. So we've got map mm -hmm. and bands, nice. I'll click on bands first. Very cool photo. Adobe rocks, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> nice Aww. name. Cool. XD and special guest. Special <laughs> guest is Katie. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Got the Photoshop boys. They sound <laughs> cool. I want to see them. And Vector. Very cool. <laughs> Let's go back and check out the map. Yeah. I like the... It's so easy to, and clear to see the different sections. Mm -hmm. The map, though, doesn't have an icon like the rest. I wonder if that was on purpose or if there was just no map icon available. Mm -hmm. And here we have the different locations That's of things. So fun. This is so cute. This is so amazing. So we can click on any of these and see like the band or the bumper cars. I think there's a way to set up the back arrow so that if you click it, it doesn't, oh yeah, it goes back to the previous screen, which I think you did there, but for the music one, we're going back to the home page. So that's just something to keep in mind. You can make the back button um, work independently of the screen's order to just go back to where the user was last, which is super handy for prototypes. But this is super cute, very neat. Mm. I like it a lot. Good job, Daryl. Party Ooh. house. Nice, you got Zirkus in town. Your town is Berlin, I wish. That'd be really cool. I wanna go there. Yeah, we love traveling, so mm -hmm. it's nice to hear about where everyone's from. Yes. What do you think of this, Katie, first glance? It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I love the stock asset. I love the colors being used. The typeface is super unique. Looks like. Oh, one thing I would uh, recommend maybe adding an arrow or a button, but I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I feel like um, this screen looks very static. So maybe having some sort of button to indicate that you can move forward. Because it looks like I can click on the name, all the text, but that's not. Um, it wouldn't be Intuitive. obvious to me yeah. on a mobile device, so I think that'd be really good to include. But let's click on the name. Oh, nice. Aww, I love that. That was a cool transition. Yeah. I'm gonna do that again. So when we click on it, we have a bunch of stuff moving up from the bottom, animating in. And the color transition looks really nice. Mm -hmm. I like the text at the top, choose your attraction, and it's super clear with these icons what you're looking at, and you can scroll. That's so cool. Yeah, this is super neat. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we can click on the train. So I'm gonna click on the train. The train ride, super <laughs> cute. I love the clown on the bottom. <laughs> These assets like are so cute. So, I like that so much. Y'all oh. are making it hard to select. Uh, yeah, right. so many everything, good submissions. Yeah, everything is so good. What do you think of the only three Zirkus coins? That's awesome. <laughs> cool. I love the visuals on this page. It's super clear that it's a train ride. There's a big order now button. Mm -hmm. These to me look like moons at first glance. They're a little bit hard to see as coins. So maybe making the three coins a bit more prominent with the text would be really neat to see. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, I love the design of this. I think it's super mm. unique. Zirkus in town. <laughs> the shadows are really cool. Good job, Party House. Yeah. You're, you lived up to your name. <laughs> Next is B. George. Thanks for participating again, B. George. Mm -hmm. So the Discover tab looks awesome. We have directions for each of these. We have Discover for the different events, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Food and drinks. It's very clean and modern. I, I like the it. background blur happening at the top too. You can see mm -hmm. when I go over the photos. Yeah, that's really cool. It has a cool that's effect awesome. on the top. Very neat. So let's see what I can click on here. We have the navigation on the bottom too with the cute icons, discover, schedule, challenges, and map. Mm -hmm. So let's see. By the way, I love the chat, what's going on there. You guys are really supporting each other and I really like that. It's super nice to see such a welcoming and supportive community. So thank you again for being here and participating. Yeah. These are beautiful. Thank you for putting them together and submitting them. I can't figure out where to click, um, unfortunately. And so I think I'm just gonna have to press the next arrow at the bottom. Cool, so we should have clicked schedule. Let me see if, I don't think it's linked in my version. Maybe you linked it later than when I grabbed it, so sorry about that. But when you click on schedule, we go over to a list of what's going on today and tomorrow. And more is about to come. Mm -hmm. I think the section titles here are very clear with the color red mm -hmm. and the lines dividing the different events with the color difference with the title versus the time. Yeah, I like that. Super clear. I also like the use of a white background when it's a list that you're looking mm -hmm. at, so it's not so busy and you can read things more clearly. Mm -hmm. I think it works really well. Let's click the next one. Challenges. Mm -hmm. Oh, you get challenges at the circus, nice. <laughs> so maybe you need to come to six events or go to six events. Meet 10 friends. Oh my gosh, oh, that's a lot of people. I like that. I like it too though, it helps you be more social at the carnival. Mm -hmm. Five drinks is a lot. I like trying different flavors of drinks, but I don't know if I'd be able to beat this challenge. <laughs> it sounds super fun though. I like the idea of challenges. <laughs> and I like that this is on a darker background when you have mm -hmm. a card format with very bold iconography, mm -hmm. there are progress bars, so it's more about the quick visuals rather than reading a lot of text. Yeah. I'm a big fan of gameability within an app. Nice anything gamification. That, mm -hmm, anything that promotes uh, a challenge. I like. A challenge, <laughs> yeah. B. George, you're speaking our language. And the last page is, I think this is the map, but we have the schedule highlighted. Mm -hmm. So we'll imagine this is a map. We can search for different places. And we have this cool Google Maps view or Apple Maps view of a carnival. This looks like the Apple campus, which kind of acts like a carnival in some ways, I'm sure. But it looks like a Coliseum a little bit in its <laughs> layout. So this is really neat. I think, um, Nearby being at the bottom is a little bit confusing to me. Maybe it's search nearby. Can you scroll down? No. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the nearby is indicating, but this to me, it's very clear that it's a map if this were highlighted. Mm -hmm. Great job, B. George. Mm -hmm. Cool, that's really all the cool. pages. Next we have Kulud, Kulad, with the summer carnival. I like the little firework in the top <laughs> left. The glowing buttons mm -hmm. and the mask. I like this the text really cool. treatment right here. Mm -hmm. This is well designed with somewhere in between the C and the I. Yeah. Fits well together. The colors are really great. Yeah. Let's start. I'm ready. Oh, nice. I like the little cards. We have games, food, maps, circus. We have navigation. This looks similar to your navigation it does. on the bottom. Did you use a kit, an iOS kit? Maybe you did. Let us know, Kulad. Because I did. <laughs> nice. So we have, it looks like discover, or actually list, notifications, discover, profile, mm -hmm. settings. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff going on here. Notifications to get on the top right. We have the back arrow. The size of the screen seems a little bit short, so I don't know what device you're measuring for, but um, maybe it's an older screen size. Um, usually you'd have a bit more real estate, though, if you wanted to push it up a little bit and uh, extend it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But let's see what happens when I click games. 
Nice. Oh, I like that. This is really clean. This is really mm -hmm. easy to read. I think the dollar sign being the same treatment as the number though gets a little hard to read. So maybe you make the money, the number of the amount bold or the dollar sign bold just to mm -hmm. differentiate that a little bit. But being in the bottom right makes it really easy to see. We have favorites and stars. We can mm -hmm. share. We have nice imagery, titles and descriptions. I like the soft um, background color too, the soft mm -hmm. drop shadows. However, I feel like with the drop shadow, it looks like it may be a button. Oh, yeah. So is it a button? I don't I'm know. I'm not sure. Should we click on one? Um, it doesn't look like I can click on, but maybe in the future um, you were planning on making these some buttons. I also noticed that the footer isn't sticky, so when I scroll, it appears. Try checking out the new sticky feature for Adobe XD, where you can make this sticky and visible on the screen at all times. I think that would really mm -hmm. help pop this up too. Let's see, if I go back now um, and go to food, okay, we get the same layout, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Consistency is key yeah. in designing interfaces. Super helpful. We have maps as well. That's nice. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. I like the way it fades as yeah. it moves upward. So you have it fading at the top so you can see the text and header more clearly. That's really mm -hmm. successful. The drop shadow helps divide that line of when it starts to gradate out. Mm -hmm. um, this is really, really neat. Mm -hmm. I like the map styling. It looks really simple and clean. Yeah. And if we look at circus. circus. Okay, the same list same. again. We got some lions and horses and artists. Nice. Nice. I really like this. Um, great job. I love the yeah. title screen too. Next up we have Gregory. Hey you, welcome back. Some personalization. Nice. So I love the pink text. I love that we have a slight background mm -hmm. so that we can read it on top of the beautiful map of Paris in the background. Got some carnivals nearby. We got some scrolling action, so you can scroll through a list, it looks like. Let's see, we can click on the fit. Oh gosh, I'm not even gonna try to brush up on my French right now, but we mm -hmm. have a party of some sort. I'm gonna click on. In Paris. Mm -hmm. And we got different days as cards, which is really neat, so we can see what day it's open, it looks like, and what days it's closed. Mm -hmm. We also have a huge open um, notification for availability. Let's see if we click walk. We then get directions via a map, which That's is super awesome. neat. I, I like that. this a lot. Great, we don't have too much time left, so I'm gonna go through the last two a little bit quickly by Edebola. This is really cool. We got explore and we got some cool type going on. We have a bunch of pictures. Wow. Nice, we have the back button. Um, if we click on home. Oh, this was maybe the title screen. This is beautiful. That is really nice. I, I like love that. the assets being used here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful text, beautiful colors. Mm -hmm. Great, so let's go forward now. We got our pictures. pictures. Okay. So when you click on a picture, I assume it's Let's sending see. us to that page. Oh yeah, so you can click on one of these pictures and it brings you to nice. the detail page. Nice. And so we have a bunch of beautiful photos, descriptions, ratings. Very good job. I love this title screen. <laughs> and the last one we've got today is Matthew. So if we click on join the fun for the Toronto Fest, we've got map events, food, rides. Let's do food. Oh gosh, Bob's Burger is really nice. <laughs> we got the ex the price, we got some ratings in here. I'm gonna go through this a little bit quickly. Um, some part of the mobile application are under construction. And then we got friends, maybe, who are <laughs> online and chatting with you. This is really neat. All right, and thank you for submitting. These are all beautiful, but Katie, are there any that stick out to you in your mind? Oh, so many. Um, let's see. I like that one, I love that one. That one's so fun. Mm. Help us decide in the comment section. You gotta pick one, Katie. Yeah, yep. <laughs> gotta pick one. Oh, um, let's see. 
Thank you, everyone, for submitting them. Yeah, They're all thank beautiful. you so much. Um, can we take a look at the first one? Oh, gosh. I think I liked Circus and Circus in town. Yeah. Good job, Party House. It's because there are so many great options. Yeah. I couldn't decide, but that one's really the great. The name is appropriate, too. So thank you, Party mm -hmm. House. Thank you for yes. submitting. Great Congrats job. to everybody. Yeah. And They're fantastic. Yeah, tomorrow we'll be looking at portfolios, so please participate. We'll be back again mm -hmm. doing final visual designs. And stick around right now to catch Sarah and Lindsay working on a health app. Thank yes. you, everyone. Thank See you, you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye.